Kayleigh McEnany joins us. Kayleigh, you worked in the White House. Is it normal for the vice president to meet alone with world leaders before he or she meets with the president? Look, I can speak to my tenure, um, and during my tenure, no, that, that was not the norm. In fact, President Trump was the one who greeted the foreign leaders. In this administration, you've had Kamala Harris do that at least once um, on behalf of President Biden, whereas, you know, with Vice President Mike Pence, he was a great ally. He always stood with President Trump when we did bilateral meetings, of which I was a part with foreign countries, with the Afghan delegation, for example. Uh, he was in the meeting, but he was beside President Trump. President Trump was the leader directing the way forward. So I would say, uh, certainly as comparing it to, to my time in the White House, this is a bit of an untraditional way to go. But why is that meeting on our screens right now open to the press, but then the president of South Korea then goes into a meeting with the president of the United States and there's no press? I mean, is the president being protected again? Yes, we know the answer to this because Jen Psaki told us when she talked to David Axelrod, we try to minimize the amount that President Biden interacts with the press. Now, in fairness, he is holding a press conference, um, I'm told, later in the day with the South Korean delegation. So that will be uh, okay. a, a situation where that's going to be fewer freewheeling question dynamics. I bet he won't take questions, uh, whereas in the Oval, he couldn't resist the shouting of questions at him. Uh, he wouldn't be able to really wiggle out of that. It's much harder to do, I would say, to get out of the, the back and forth. I want to talk to you about Israel and Gaza. We understand that President Biden is going to lead America's effort to rebuild the Gaza Strip. That means we're paying for this. Why should we be paying for this, Kaylee? Yeah, we've tried this before, you know, foreign policy adventurism, trying, for instance, in Afghanistan to rebuild the country. It didn't work in the 80s. It didn't work when we tried it again much later. Um, I think you raise a great point. I, I think our Monday should go to uh, building up our ally, Israel. Um, to Biden's credit, he did do the arms sale to Israel uh, that was necessary and needed. Uh, but rebuilding a country, um, that's just not exactly what I think America should do. We've tried it before again, as I noted, in Afghanistan, and it didn't quite work out for us. But it, should we be doing this? Why are we doing this? I mean, it's not a nation-building effort. It's, uh, it's to appease the far left, isn't it? That, that's, that's exactly what it is. You hit the nail on the head. What you're seeing with Biden is really interesting. You're seeing him try to uh, appease uh, the, the pro-Israel faction of his party with the weapons sale, but at the same time pay lip service to the radical left. You haven't seen him come out and say Hamas terrorists stop attacking Israel. I, this is, you hit the nail on the head, I think, political motivations, trying to cater to the Ilhan Omars, the Rashida Tlaibs, the AOCs, uh, who have made anti-Semitic statements in their past, but catering to them is necessary. And today's Democrat, Democrat Party, unfortunately. Kelly McEnany, thank you very much for coming back to us and speaking with us today. Always appreciate it. See you again soon, we hope. Thank you very much indeed.